All right, this is a quick video on showing you how to create an app and get the uh, access codes we need to connect R to Twitter. Let me point out that I'm in developer.twitter.com and I've already got a project. My project is called Test21. I'm not gonna go through the process of creating a project or registering as a developer with Twitter. Uh, I am just going to show you how to get the keys that we need. So here is my project that I've created. Uh, it's called Test21, and I have one app in it. I believe each project allows you to create up to three apps. So I'm going to click Add an App. I had an existing app. I thought I deleted these. Uh -huh. Let's go back. Go back without saving. I do see a lot of apps over here, actually. I wonder if I can edit and delete. Here we go, let's see. This one is, yeah, we can get rid of that one. <laughs> okay, I deleted that app. Let me see if I can go back now and add an app. Look, it's gonna give me there we go. So now we've also learned how to delete an app, I guess. Uh, okay, so first of all, uh, which of these systems do I want to use? New work, use to test out changes, or use for live products? Uh, it looks like we can choose only one of the first two. Uh, frankly, this doesn't really matter for us because we're just trying to gain access to uh, the API. So I'll leave it in development. Apps are where you get your keys and tokens, plus set permissions. Yep. So what should we name this thing? Well, how about MEA3290 Fall 22? <laughs> Next. Okay, so now we're going to get our API key, our API secret, and our bearer token. Now, if memory serves, we also need our consumer key and our consumer secret. So we don't actually have everything we need here. I'm going to go to app settings. Okay. And so now we can see, let's see, user authentication is not set up. This allows users to log into your app with Twitter. No, I don't, I don't know. Let's see. Let's say read and write. We don't need to direct message. These are permissions. Uh, this is going to be a web app. It's not a native app, right? We're not writing, writing this in Java or something. It requires a uh, callback URL or, or redirect URL or callback URI. For whatever reason, this has always worked. Uh, <laughs> any, entering in an HTTPS of 127.0.0.1 port 1410. Oh, website URL is required now. That's kind of new. I'll just plug in my Elon URL. Okay, optional, 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 optional. So let's hit save. Yes. And so now that we made those changes, you can see that we also have a client ID and a client secret. Right, let me hit done. I have not saved any of this. <laughs> But that's okay. So what I think we can do now, here's our settings page. We can go to keys and tokens. And so here's our API key and secret, our bearer token and our access token and secret. We need all of that, if I'm not mistaken. Oh wait, client ID, client secret, and then bearer token, access token, and secret. <laughs> it's a lot of stuff. Well, let me show it to you in R. Let's see, so. I believe what we want to do, let me just find the um, file I'm looking for. Oh, not much luck so far. What I'm looking for is that really long thing, here we go, where we have to load our consumer keys and consumer secrets. So I'm just going to copy all of this and throw it into a new document. Okay, so first of all, library or tweet. <laughs> Uh, second of all, this is there's two sections to this. We have to create a token, and we do that through the create token function, which is part of our tweet. So you have to load this first. 
And we're gonna create our token and basically define all these things. So app, consumer key, consumer secret. So we have to copy all this stuff over. Let's start with app name. <laughs> That's easy, right? It is, I'm sure, case sensitive. Okay, consumer key and consumer secrets. So that's gonna be, I believe that's client ID and client secret. Let's regenerate, yes. So there's our client secret, copy. Okay, let me see if I can go back over here. Client secret, well, I have consumer secret. Again, I think that's what it is. I saved it, client ID, all right. Uh, I guess it's that. That's weird. Uh, let's see, let's switch back over and again, I'm thinking that is consumer key. Let's see if it's about the same length. That's a little longer. Client ID, client secret. All right. Up here we have API and secret, bearer token, access token and secret. I think we need access token and secret. Let's see. Access token, access secret. So access token and secret, generate, and then Let's get this one. So that's the access token. Yeah, that's not going to work. Let's see. That looks about the same. Uh, and let me copy this one. And this is the access token secret. Paste that. All right. Let's see if we can run this function now. Saving off to users B Walsh blah, 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 blah. So it's created this token. Now, if I'm not mistaken, <laughs> I might be mistaken, we can then run our tweet underscore app with the parentheses. And it gives us this pop up. Please enter your bearer token. Well, we saw that. I guess I'm going to have to regenerate here. Copy. I uh, saved it. Paste that gibberish in. Hit OK. And it says Twitter bearer token. So in theory, that means we should be able to do things. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> get timeline. Uh, let's see. Uh, could not authenticate you. All right, now you might have noticed that I had our tweet app and then in parentheses and then quotes I had plugged in. I believe it was that bearer token. Let's see. Not saying the same thing, Twitter bearer token. Now let's see if we can get the timeline. No. Hmm, I wonder what I did wrong. API key and secret is going into I assume, oh, maybe consumer key and consumer secret are API key and API secret, not client ID and client secret. Well, we're learning all kinds of stuff. Let's try this. Okay, I'm gonna regenerate these. So to summarize, I'm copying in my API key and API key secret into where I had previously assumed was the client section. Let's try this. So here's the key. Uh, I'm just gonna make sure that that ends in the right place. Uh, let's get the secret copy. Okay, and I'm gonna run this function for creating a token again. It saved it again. Let's run our tweet app, Twitter bear token, get timeline, and it looks like it's finally working. Yes. Okay, so had to go back and forth a few times there to get things right, but uh, I think that kind of works. So to kind of translate here, the API key and secret are what you would plug in for your access, I'm sorry, for your consumer key and your consumer secret. The access token and access secret are actually named correctly. We have to grab the app name as well. And then after doing all that, I ran our tweet app and then plugged our um, bearer token code into here. My assumption is if we had gotten these credentials right in the first time when we run our tweet app, it will uh, just do this again and we could insert our bearer token. Let me regenerate it yet again. And it seems like that is still working. So there you go, that's how you can turn um, 
a Twitter developer account into an app using our tweet in R.